Hello and thanks for joining the midweek edition of Journalist Hangout. It's great to be back. I'm Ayodili Ozubakum. Today on the program, Buhari retains 12 ministers from his first term as ASU TMG brand nominees, incompetent and lacking fresh ideas. And later on the show, two killed in fresh shite police clash as presidency vows not to release El Zak Zaki now. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Utitoju and Emeka Majulagu. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. The much anticipated list of ministerial nominees is out. 43 persons were selected across the six geopolitical zones, with the Northwest producing the highest number of nominees, while the Southeast has the lowest. Earlier this month, President Mamadou Buhari had said he would pick those he personally knows. Now, former state governors, former senators, and 12 former ministers uh, from the president's first time in the office are uh, among those who will form the new Federal Executive Council after the confirmation by the Senate. Among the returnee are ministers like Babatunde Raji Fashola, Chris Ngige, Roti Miyamechi and Lai Mohammed, while many Nigerians had hoped that it would be out with the old and in with the new. Others had wanted president, the president to place policy above politics in the selection of ministers. And for the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, Buhari's ministerial list is lacking in innovation and generation change. The chairperson of the TMG group, that's Transition Monitoring Group, Dr. Abiola Akiode Afolabi, said the president should have shocked for more people with more expertise that, that can assuage the fears of the people for a bleak future. How do you react to this gentleman? Um, Jide, earlier today, somebody made a comment. They said that this is not a ministerial list, that they are still expecting the ministerial list, that this looks like a campaign list. The, the truth is, is a combination of both. Uh, the president selected a lot of those guys with an eye on 2023 because the APC must do its best to make itself stronger. The APC is weaker by the overall result of the 2019 election. elections. Some people may not admit it, but since we are in the business of speaking the truth, we can point at what has transpired between 2015 and 2019. And everyone can see, except the overly biased, uh, see no evil supporters of the APC, that PDP one more states this time around. Hmm. There are more states that PDP controls now than before. Hmm. So for a party that is serious, they have to do their best to stop the rot, to ensure that the, the PDP does not continue to gain traction. So what you'll find in, is that in some states, the, 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 the president has gone for career politicians. Because career politicians are the people who can keep the party alive. I'll give a few examples. In Sokoto, the woman who used to represent the state in the cabinet, the daughter of uh, Triple Alaji Alaji, was not a politician. But the president has gone for Dean Giyadi. Dean Giyadi is a former, um, a former SSG. He contested for the governorship of the state. He was Bafarawa's right-hand man. And then he defected. When Bafarawa defected back to the uh, uh, PDP, he decided to stay. And he became <coughs> the nominee of Maga Takada Wamako. So initially, Yusuf Suleiman, former Minister of Transport, was on that list as representative of Sokoto State. Because Yusuf Suleiman ran the president's campaign in Sokoto State before the election. But 
the, the, the president has gone for a politician who is pragmatic, who can mobilize people so that that kind of person will give real battle to uh, Tambua in Sokoto State. That's the same thing that he has done in Benue. In Benue, he has gone for um, uh, Akume. Akume is a better mobilizer of people than um, uh, Adobe. Adobe is largely laid back when it comes to politics. In fact, I don't see him as a politician in the real sense of the word because he's just a straight person. He wants things done the right way and all that. He's competent at what he does. But the better politician, the better crowd pleaser, if I can use that phrase, the better mobilizer of politicians and the bigger politician between the two of them, between Haldu Ogbe and uh, uh, Akume, is the former governor of uh, Benue State, uh, Senator Akume. So the president has gone for him because they've lost that state. The same way they've lost Sokoto State, but they are trying their best to keep the APC alive in the state. Because once you become gov um, a minister, you are the biggest politician representing that party in the state. And you have resources, you can do, get so many things done with federal might and all that. So if they've carefully chosen a lot of those guys so that they can help to strengthen the hand of the, of the, the APC. It's, it's, it's not fair to simply look at those guys and conclude that the president has simply chosen uh, politicians all through. I, I don't believe, for example, that Sunday Dari is a politician. He's never been a politician. Never. So what is there on the, on the list of ministers? And there are other people too who have never been politicians. Even some of the people that the president has chosen to retain have never been politicians. So this is the thing. So a lot of factors came into play. And um, Emeka, some people, will, some people will move further to say that why did it take Mr. President almost two months to give us this list? That this list would have been ready a day after inauguration. That if you are going to give us a Ruti Miyamichi, a Babatude Fashola, and those people are the people you've worked with over time, and you are returning 12 other ministers, and those people, uh, Lai Mohamed and Co., uh, these are the people that you know, you've known, and the new ones are people that are party members. Festus Keyamo was, was a spokesperson for your campaign. Why did it take you a long time? Yeah, of course, you know, <coughs> APC is a big, is a big party, and um, there are a lot of interests, all kind of disparate interests in um, APC. And so the, the, the president was faced with um, different, you know, with, with a number of choices. Don't forget, this is his second term, so he's just basically going to consolidate on what he has done, um, what he did in the first term. So now he was under a lot of pressure. People bringing different lists, different groups visiting him, conversing for one person or the other, one interest or the other. So I believe at the end of the day, maybe he, uh, what he actually had in mind is not what has actually come up because you can see very clearly that some political interests had their way. They had their way in this list. When you look, when you go through the list, you see that some political interests had some, you know, they're, 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 you can see the predominant, you can see their imprints that they really did a lot of work in getting their people on board. And like Jide said, the 2023 calculation is very strong in this. But I also believe that in choosing this team, the president uh, may have, you know, ruffled some feathers. If you look at some states, for instance, uh, like in Anambra, he chose two people, Dr. Chris Ngige and uh, Sharon Ikazo. And both of them are from Anambra Central. Ikazo is from Obosi. Ngege is from Alon. The same, I mean, Ikazo is from Idemili, Idemili North, mm -hmm. and Ngege is from Idemili Idemili South. South, the same central district. Mm -hmm. If you go to Edo, the governor's in law, the governor's in law, and Osage Hanire, same um, Edo South. You know, and then but, yours, uh, we must declare here the constitution is not specifying the senatorial district. Yeah, but what the constitution but, says, one per state. But you see, mm -hmm. there must be balance. There must be well, balance choose in choosing. Balanced. You can, I mean, for instance, that means you can even choose brothers from the same, from the same family. family. Mm -hmm. 
you, there must be balance. Because if you want to really spread out your influence, mm. you must carry everybody along. Now, I want to see how the president is going to balance you know, is going to balance this. Is he going to use federal appointment or is he going to make up with um, maybe SA, special assistants or heads of um, uh, uh, heads of um, federal boards? In, you know, from this, because there will be complaints. Yeah, okay. For, again, look at um, um, Anambra. Anambra is due to have an election, governorship election, maybe, you know, a little over a year or two years time. And the the, the, the pendulum is likely to swing in the direction of Anambra South. But you now pick people from Anambra Central that had occupied the governorship. He had been a governor. So I don't understand. I don't know what Mr. President is pointing out. But Imo is very interesting. Emeka Wajiba was one of those that drew up the APC constitution. Mm. Emeka Wajiba fell out with Okorocha, Rochas Okorocha. Mm. And so now that Rochas has been somewhat displaced from the center of power, Emeka Wajiba, a tested grassroots politician, very smart, you know, smart mobilizer. Now, will be the face, the new face of the opposition in Imo State, instead of uh, people like Kosita uh, Izunaso and um, the, the, the APC candidate in the last governorship election. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of, a lot of things, a, you know, there are a lot of permutations around the choices. But again, the there are some people on that list. Okay, like we, can, we can't exhaust yes. it. We, okay. we can't uh, just, mm -hmm. one of our major strengths on journalist hangouts is our ability to just forecast what will happen and we'll give you, we'll give you a kind of fair idea of what is going to happen. I remember our Democracy Day special, that's in June 12, Babajide made a prediction about the Buhari's ministerial list. Just listen to Babajide, what he said. This is, was our special Democracy Day edition. expecting to retain between 12 to 15 of them and bring in the right people. Uh, you, if you remember what the, his wife said, some of those people that eventually became ministers were not even known to the president. The president um, does not have that cosmopolitan nature and he did not have friends across the country that could help him to get the, you know, uh, he, he was before, before the 2015 election, he was kind of in his cocoon. He didn't really break out. So for that kind of person to be able to find the right people across the country to work for him will be difficult. So the, 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 it was now the responsibility of some people close to him to find the people to work for the president. The president's wife admitted that more that I didn't know some of the people that uh, had to work with him. Maybe that played a part in the unnecessary delay. And Nigeria paid dearly for that delay because it affected the economy Stop negatively. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, we've been able to see what some of those governors, I mean, so those ministers yes, yes. Uh, can achieve. And he has people now who who may have been seen for four years. Some of them had worked with him informally. He has an opportunity to give a, uh, a chance to some of those people. The president's goal, his idea, what he thinks he should do. For example, the president is positive about the railways. He wants to do something about the railways. So in that way, that, uh, uh, that regard. in that regard, he may not be thinking of tampering with the, uh, the setup there because he, even a few days back, he still talked about it. So that should tell you that probably the person staying there, I mean, the person who is minister in that ministry, mm. he will mm. not Keep touch it. Up. But he could also tinker with that ministry by break, I mean, uh, splitting it into two. Actually, said it between. 12 and 15. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, 12 um, of those ministers will be returning. Papa Jide, I've been talking to people since morning and then the, um, I, um, the former minister of works, Adisha Yogunlewe, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, made mention of some players during the days of Olushe uh, Gombasanjo, the days of um, Good Luck Jonathan and um, yeah, um, late Yaradwa. He's saying that 
beyond the political class that they bring stabilizing factors. People that have worked with international organizations, the World Bank, Olusegun Aganga was the MD of yeah. Goldman Sachs, mm -hmm. and he, he created the Sovereign Wealth for Okonjo-Wala, mm -hmm. and uh, OBS, yes, Kusili, question, yes. the, the, people like Nasir Erufai, mm -hmm. even Professor, the, the man in um, 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 the Agri Minister, Yes. Akiumi Yes, Akiumi mm -hmm. yes. yes. These are not politicians, but they were able to bring their experience mm -hmm. from where they were coming from. And today, the Agri Revolution is still what the template the federal government is working with. But on this list, I've not seen people like that. Yes, it's true. You want to see, especially as we are facing um, power issues, you want to see a battle Nigeria return to that ministry and probably give um, Fashola works so that I can fix roads. And Bonjour. Yes, yeah, well, that's going to happen. We've always it's wanted that to happen. To it's inevitable now. <clears throat> just as, uh, just mm. as I, I, I predicted that uh, Roti Miyamechi and uh, Hadis Rika will have that ministry split into two so that mm. they can go separate ways and stop uh, fighting one another. They never work together. Uh, yes, mm. in, in a very embarrassing mm. manner the first time. Uh, that we've come to uh, associate with them. So that will happen now with 43 ministers coming instead of even the 42. This is mm. probably the, the largest cabinet ever, mm. you know, in a season. That's going to pull from geopolitical zones too. Not, it was not even uh, satisfied with that. He decided uh, through presidential uh, discretion mm. to give an extra minister, you know, to Kano. And that's how um, General Sally Mageshi. So is Kano, Kano, is, Kano no, got the, three ministers? No, he got the, the two. There's two from, two from, uh, from uh, Kaduna. Kaduna okay. yes. So <clears throat> now you are supposed to have a maximum of two. Okay. From each geopolitical zone. Okay. But Kano is part of the Northwest. The Northwest has seven states, more states than any zone in mm. Nigeria. He has now gone to pick General Mageshi from Kano to make three from the North Northwest. Mm. That's the point that I'm making. Mm. He's gone to by by presidential discretion, mm. he has gone to pick a minister mm. from Kano. Because naturally, Kaduna are taking the two. Uh, Kaduna are taking two ministers. So, <laughs> in, 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 that third person, third person from that zone has now gone to um, um, Kano. To, to Kano. That's yeah. General Magashi. Yeah. So, the, the, the point I'm making is we want to see a lot more of those technocrats, a lot more of them. I believe that Sunday Dari, for example, mm. is a technocrat. He's experienced. He was an executive director in, in the NCC. NCC yes, yes. Uh, mm. he was a zona commissioner mm. uh, uh, representing the Southwest and the NCC. NCC. He's traveled abroad. He's he worked, worked at VOA, VOA, yes. in VOA yeah. outside service. Yes. He was a, a, a chief executive. Mm. He and has experience. The news magazine. Yes, as, uh, the news magazine is he, he, done very well. He did very well as a journalist and writer. So. I will not see him as a politician. In fact, he's not someone who really enjoys the company of politicians that much. As, as my friend of uh, more than uh, 25 years. So that person, yes, he's not a politician. And when you look at even the women, that is the seven women that is brought on, Pauline Talen. Yes. She rejected in 2015. She rejected her nomination in 2015. For ambassadorial posting. She didn't want to. But she said she, she wanted said to take care of the husband. Yes, yes, Ambassador yes, posting, yes. she rejected. Okay. You know, but she's the, she's the wife. She's the, the, the friend of the president's wife. So, you have every reason to believe that she was the, the president's wife's uh, choice. Mm -hmm. You know, for that position. And what I'm saying is that the bulk of those women, you can't call them politicians. Mm -hmm. But I understand what Nigerians are saying. That look, they want. They want technocrats of the rarefied class. Because we have people across the world who are doing fantastically well. I once said on this program that the man who was heading the, the water treatment plant of, of, uh, of uh, uh, Florida, 
It was in the night region from Lagos. And we have people like that mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. can bring back into yes, this country. Yeah, we'll listen, yeah. The man mm -hmm. who was PAMSEC for, for uh, PAMSEC Works and later became commissioner for works here in Lagos under Ambody. We, we, we saw him in the US. And there are many Nigerians in the diaspora who are doing work that we could actually bring. Mm -hmm. Working in NASA. Yes. As in we, must, we must find the right balance. We need politicians to hold on to some ministerial positions, but we also need technocrats who can make the difference. You know, technocrats who can really bring the experience of the best way of doing things, you know, into uh, the administration. Maybe as we go on and the, pres the president will permit us to see some form of rejiggling or uh, cabinet reshuffle. Mm. Maybe some of these people mm. can come back. You can see the cabinet that is uh, that we are going to see in Lagos. Mm. The kind of people that we are talking about, they are coming in. Mm. Yeah. The yeah. People like Fashola and the rest of them who are products of the production line, Tinubu's production line of excellent public officers, they are the kind of people that we are talking about. We never knew them as politicians. Fashola was never a politician. Our politicians hated him. Mm. They That's accused him of true. always blocking the access to Oga. But Tinubu saw in him someone who could be a good governor for Lagos and eventually became governor. And there are many of them like that, that came with him to stabilize his government and they did quite well. They didn't have to be politicians to be good at, their, at what they were told to do. Hmm. I, I, I like it for example, was not a politician. Mm, mm. He was just so a journalist. Jo journalist. Mm. You know? So, so my Tony Bello was not a politician. Yemi, Yemi Kadoso, Yemi Kadoso, Wale, all of them, Wale, Wale, they were not politicians. So, uh, These are fantastic cabinet. people that mm. any day, any time, mm. you see them, you be able to see. Even, even, uh, yeah. even uh, yeah. the current deputy governor, the current deputy governor of yeah. Lagos, yeah. Was, yeah. who, in my was, view, he was uh, commissioner for science and technology. Yes. Doctor he, he is one of the most brilliant persons that have ever come across. Yeah. And this guy, he was not a politician. Yes, his dad was a big politician. Yeah. But he was not a politician. He was a lecturer in the rest of, um, uh, United States of America. Yeah, but it didn't stop him from being successful. So mm. we need to encourage our government to continue to go for merit. Yes. And the mm. people who can deliver merit, a lot of them are abroad. A lot of them are here too, that we can use them so that we don't overly rely on politicians mm. to move mm. our country forward. In Lagos State, we have uh, uh, two nominees, and uh, we had the former Speaker of Lagos House of Assembly, Amora. that's Senator Olorun Nibema Mora, yeah. and one of the best lawmakers this country has yeah. ever produced. Yeah. He was in Senate, and he shot yeah. like a, a million stars. Yeah, of course. I, I congratulate him, and, um, but Fashola needs, to, Fashola needs to get his act together, because he disappointed Nigerians. Greatly, in those by your own years. reckoning. Mm -hmm. In the, uh, uh, look at the roads. You just uh, look at the roads. Housing. How many housing units were delivered to Nigeria? Um, um, works. Power. Uh, do you where, think, where is the? Um, do you think it was overwhelmed? Power. Of course, it was clear from the beginning. Nigeria okay. said so. It was clear from the beginning. But and, there are some areas and, where, if you go to Kwara now, yeah, that road that leads to Jeba, and you go and tell them that Fashola. It's not been a failure. You will probably be lynched. Hey, but is what about other areas? It, it, no, it's an overwhelming okay. job. Let's yes. face it. It's yes. an overwhelming yes. job that is he has. Fact. And when we suggested it, that it, they should it, split this, yeah, the it was probably be, yes. uh, one way of helping him. Yes. For example, yes. if, for example, Fashola, for example, has done nothing about Mambila. Mm. And his spokesman called me yesterday and said, Jide, you said the minister took a okay, chopper. Jide, let, but let, let me quickly take this call. I have a Suleiman is calling from Ibadan. Thank you for joining us, Sule. Hello. Hello. Yes, thank you for hanging out with us. Yes. Go ahead with your contribution, Suleiman. Yeah, the list released by Mr. President for screening is quite interesting. Uh, two particular things intrigued me there. The first, the nomination for Delta. I see it as going further to I'm the clever.
thing is having All right. Hmm? But, but, um, what we are looking, yeah, we, we are we're talking about, we are talking about Fashola being overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah, now, no, what I'm trying to I'm say, saying that I'm not saying that, not that Fashola, simply that, it's not simply. No, I'm not saying that, that Fashola, Fashola as a person mm. eh, could not have done. No, you said he's disappointed. He, yes, because it's he, an overwhelming he, job. He had, you see, he cannot he, fix he, he, all of the roles in Nigeria in four years. But and even then the he job, also has the job. The portfolio. He also has the job of delivering electricity. Yeah. You know, we've always that's, suggested that that's the split. kind of an equivalent task. That's equivalent Let me tell you, he, he did far better in road construction than in the power sector. Mm. Because in the power sector, because the sector is uh, deregulated, deregulated partly, mm. not totally. Partly, not totally, mm. totally no? yeah. His hands are tied. Yes. But in terms of roads construction, it's done well. You see him go from point to point, construction of dams and all that. The people who have benefited, mm. no matter how little, mm. you can't stand before those people and say this man has been a failure. And that's why I gave the example of yeah. Jeba. I know roads that Fashola met in a bad state and he has gone to fix. In fact, I know. he had construction so in the all about, states. But the thing is, we are talking solution. of a whole country. But, yes. mm. A whole country. But they are and fields, if you look at the state of our roads, China even before the... No, you see, be they will it get there. You see, yes. they will get there. You can't imagine that in four years, Fashola will fix all roads. It is not, it is not Aladdin for God's sake. He was even talking not about four years being um, so small for a minister, a commissioner for a minister of works to concentrate to do the, the job. He and uh, but, 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 he again, but again, but again, but again, you remember there was something, there was the time the president talked about the Ogwashiku Dam. And the report that came from there, from that place said, there was nothing like that. There was no work. No work had been done. So they had something has to no, be done. No, there are some people thought that okay. Mambila was. Uh, Gentlemen, was, yeah. was, was till Jude now went <laughs> and um, you know did and, the impossible. Yes. And, 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 and Kim <laughs> Bello called me and said, Jude, you claim that the minister looked down from a military chopper. <laughs> we didn't go there at all. Your story is not true. I said that was what they told me in Taraba. He said we didn't even go to, to Mambila at all. all. That Which makes that makes it worse. Years, it makes it worse in four years. Fashola did Fashola didn't see how Mambila looked like, and his postman confirmed so, that. And again, they didn't. They so didn't I appreciate they, that they, they, they will okay. tell us the truth. Okay, That's second Niger Bridge. Okay, let's take this break. Yes. Let's take this break. When we come back, I know your zone is very, very passionate. About yes, sir, you can see he's talking about <laughs> Guashuku and other things. Yes, we'll be right back after this time. It's still journalist hangout. Stay with us. The, the Senate, that's the upper legislative chamber. And Babajide, I looked at um, um, in uh, Apabio tried to run as a senator. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't make it and he's still at the tribunal. He was uh, brought in. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about Akume. Um, Ralph Areguesola had just finished um, as the mm -hmm. governor mm -hmm. for eight years. And uh, don't forget, Ralph Areguesola was the commissioner for works on that um, um, Bola um, Tinobu. Yes, from eight eight years. So um, um, major roads in Lagos today, to his credit, yeah. and even the in lasting, um, the lasting um, in legacy Lagos. in Oshun. Mm -hmm. So bringing him on board now, a lot of people will say, ha, ah, must it revolve around these same people? every time some people have been busy since 1999 yes. and somebody was even telling me that okay Elijah Lai Mohammed was the chief of staff to Ashu Tinobu mm -hmm. in 1999 yes. some people have yes. been in and out of government yeah. mm, ever since that time yes um I would rather have a Raul Farag than have a young man who will be governor in his early 40s and run a state like a giddy palo. I would rather have Rauf than have someone who will run a state like a giddy palo. Hmm. The truth is, Rauf has positive energy. It's difficult to find people who are as hard working as he is. And this pattern life. I have, hmm. I have proof of that. Proof of that. And I saw the work. You can, we can accuse him of. Uh, having his mouth full in in um, Oshun State, but knowing his Marxism Leninism background, yes. he wanted to solve all the problems at one go. It's building roads. He wanted to do everything all at once. Mega schools, you know, and he was encouraged by the fact that tons of money came in during the, when, first, in the time. first time. 
But when we, we had ran that into problems in the second term. When we had that uh, meltdown, it affected him, affected everyone. But the, the thing is, those things that Arek Beshola have done, those fantastic schools that I showed to Nigerians the other day, many people didn't know schools that beautiful were in, were in Ocean State. Those roads, oh, no, Baba, no. the Lesha, the water treatment plant, one of the best in the country that is doing in Elisha or that he, he, he was doing in Elisha will be completed soon. The debt for which they mock him, by the end of this year, I hear that one of the sizable, those sizable debts, they will have finished paying. Many years down the line, people will appreciate the fantastic governor that Aregbe was for Oshun people. They can mock him. It's in the, it's, it's in the nature of people to mock you when you are down. But the president must have seen in him some qualities that this guy can bring positive energy to his administration. All that matters is give him the right portfolio. Give him the right portfolio. If you give him the right portfolio, you will see. Look at this uh, Sukuk. Uh, we started it. Yeah. He, he popularized yes. it. The, Before the federal the, government and other states went for it. The school feeding program school feeding that feeding the APC program. administration yes. borrowed mm. across board. Okay. That was I, what he brought I have brought Adamu from board. Lagos. Thank you for joining us, Adamu. Hello. Yes, Adamu. Go yeah, ahead with your contribution. Me. I would like to commend uh, Baba Jide for a uh, job well done. Uh, thank uh, you. According to... Uh, okay, we, we missed uh, Adamu. Now, when you look at the other side of the list, uh, looking at, okay, go to Kwara State. You have Senator Bumisola Saraki. She was a senator between 2007 to 2011. Um, the younger, is it younger sister to yes, Bumisola um, 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 Bukola, um, Bukola Saraki? Mm -hmm. And we have Lai Mohamed, both from Kwara State. Yeah, of course. They worked. They 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 really work for the president. They work for the president. They work for uh, the party. The, the election. Mm. Yeah, they 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 work for the party. And um, well, to her credit, um, grassroots politician, they were able to displace her brother, the a heavyweight. The you know, they were able to mm. displace him. You know, and well, I think it's a reward. But for me, the federal cabinet should not just be about rewarding people. It should be about experience because. The nation at this time needs a radical overhaul. And then I have issues with bringing people with, you know, have case, corruption cases, you know, bringing them into the federal cabinet. It, it tells a kind of story about the coloration of the cabinet. You know, there's something and yes, about it. Yes, we are fighting that, corruption. Yeah, we are fighting corruption. It tells, corruption. yes, they are innocent. Right. But, but they are innocent but, but, in the eyes of the law. But those but, people have not been convicted. They not yes, they have not. But, but, you see, but you see the, okay. the very fact. Okay, I, I have this call from Quara State. Toby is calling us from Quara State. Thank you, Toby, for joining us. Toby. Hello? Toby, are you there? Oh, Emeka? Uh, so, what I'm, um, what I'm trying to say is that, yes, but... I think the president should do something about this, you know, such kind Jide, of... let me put that to you. Let's lay that to rest. Yes. Some, somebody asked me earlier today, yes. he's telling me that somebody like Timmy Priyasiava from Bayosa State, yes. that the Jonathan Goodluck administration actually confiscated 58 houses. 48, yes. 48 houses from this man. And Kayama was, was, was the Kayama Kayama was the prosecutor. Yes. <laughs> Yet they are in the same federal cabinet now. <laughs> Why Kayamo might serve in any capacity? And the same to me, Pierre Silva. I don't know where the case is. I don't know. Maybe he has been indicted. I no, don't know. The maybe the case was returned don't, to him. <laughs> but the houses were returned to him, and today he is a minister. He got justice. He got justice. How? He won in court. <laughs> he won in court. He won in yeah. court. What was this judge name? The, the Lagos judge. Uh, Ademola? Ademola, yes. Go and read Justice Ademola's judgment. For me, I don't know whether to remember is a thief or not. No, if it's I don't know whether any courts. You, you, you can't say, say that he's a thief. No, see, that is the thing. You see, the thing is, thing. You see, the, thing is <laughs> the thing is, people, it's not everyone that the EFCC, for example, accuses of being a thief yes, that is a thief. thief. We saw the case of uh, the former, former principal secretary. 
Uh, the man who was uh, head of service. Okay, Oron Saye. Uh, Oron Saye. Oron Saye was accused of being a thief. And I, I was saying it from the beginning, every time we discussed, I said, this man, I believe he never stole. By the time the case was brought before the judge, and Oron Saye's lawyer, Entered uh, uh, no what was it called? No case of mission. No yes. He was the he was the, uh, the discharged and acquitted. Yeah. And yeah. I'm now aware that the FCC mm -hmm. has uh, someone the courage to appeal. It's not everyone that the FCC brings before a judge that gets convicted. So if they lied against me now, if someone lied against me now that I raped uh, a woman, and it was meant to just stop me from getting a, a ministerial appointment. So before even investigating, they should just not allow me to Some people are even saying Akpabio, although he has, not uh, he has not stood trial officially, yeah. but some people are even saying Akpabio was meant to have a, a case with the EFCC yes. that immediately oh, crossed over to the yeah. APC. That, that, the, um, th those cases were put aside. Today is a ministerial nominee. I don't know. The EFCC never arraigned him. Anyone who has not been brought before a court, people can't be saying some of these things that they are saying. We know that our politicians are thieves. They get away with these things. But it is the law that is supreme. Yes. If a Pablo has not been brought before a court of law, no matter the suspicion oh, that we have. He has not convicted. He has not even been brought before. You know, mm. I'm taking it step mm. by step. He has not even been brought before a court of law. Maybe he's been investigated and all that. No matter the suspicion that we have of him, that, okay, that this man had his uh, finger in the cookie jar, we cannot continue to, to make so much noise about it because there is no uh, the evidence. You must, you must convict someone. Mm. And if so many innocent people have been accused of corruption, I remember Lawan, the former minister of, uh, works. of, 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 of uh, works. Well, Lawan. The judge abused the FCC. How do you bring this kind of case before me? On a final note here, ASU and the Transition Monitoring Group, they've said this brand of nominees are incompetent and lacking fresh ideas. The People's Democratic Party expectedly actually said, look, it's not the list, the ministerial list, you know, it's nothing to write home about. I don't, totally, the I don't totally agree with them. I mean, some of the nominees are people who have proven Look at themselves? It cares, it cares who have example. proven themselves? Yes, no as yes, the as done well. Yes, so these people have proven themselves as, I mean, people who are capable, you know, of occupying the position of ministers. I mean, you can't just dismiss all of them. I know they, they, they I mean, they were indirectly taking pot shots at mm -hmm. Adamu Adamu, who didn't really pull his weight as education minister. But of course, you wouldn't say that somebody like Nkige. You they can did give really him a do new well. Portfolio, no, yeah, time. because Gigi did really do because you had a lot, a lot of, of disputes, cases. industrial mm -hmm. disputes, yes. strikes, and all of that. And he resolved and Gigi, it. Gigi was going from one meeting to the other, resolving this, resolving this, resolving. So he, I, I believe, he was one minister that really had so I much. Although that. I didn't really like the way he handled some of those issues, but give it to him. I think Gigi tried in, 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 you know, in, yeah. in, in some of those uh, instances. I mean, you had some, you have, okay, look at somebody like Sunday Diary. Are you going to say that Sunday Diary is not, uh, uh, should not uh, occupy that position? Is it the woman from UNESCO, the Nigerian yes, ambassador no. to, 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 to UNESCO? Yeah. Are you going to dismiss that woman? There are some, is it Mamora that you dismiss? Even Fashola, even Fashola. Yes, it was overwhelmed, but Fashola um, is a quality, the, is a quality the nomination. from the states, the governor between 1999 to 2003. Well, and the vice chairman of APC. Yeah, Adebayo will need to um, prove himself because um, his tenure as a governor of Ekiti didn't really sparkle like that. But need, even the man from Ondo State, Alasha Adura, I've been reading comments about you know oh, people there are, saying there they're are, not see, there are, to but there what are there small, are there are small there portfolios are. that they can give these yes. people. You know, but they, they don't have to totally give them. They don't them, have to yes. give them fantastic portfolios that will expose them. Is it Mwa Juba, for instance, that you say Mwa Juba is not qualified to be a minister? Or is it in a Duoga? Okay, which Oga? Which Oga? Which Oga? Fantastic philanthropist. As for a minister, he didn't really shine. I became a very outshone him, overshadowed him. If he gets back to the foreign ministry, he must do much, much better. I think it should be defined. convinced that he did well. Okay. Maybe mm -hmm. the president was coming. So that's why it's well. coming back. Yeah. Okay. Moving on now. It's our constitutional rights 
and we must protest that. We must protest. This is the claim of members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, popularly known as Shites, who have been protesting the detention of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zaki, since 2015. The constitution does make provision for peaceful assembly, but the Shites' protests have been anything but peaceful. On Monday, DSP Omar of the Abuja Police Command and Channels TV reporter Precious Owolabi were killed as shite protesters clashed with police in Abuja. The next day, the fresh clashes ensued between the security agents and the shite causing pandemonium as people fled for their lives. Two persons were not so lucky as they were killed in the chaos. The shites have said that their daily protest will end if El Zazaki is freed. But the presidency has said that the issue of invo involving El Zazaki could only be determined by the judiciary and not President Momodou Buhari. Babajide, for a long time, this has been in the public domain. And there's always, you know, when you say something that is untrue for a long time, some people take it as the fact of the matter. But it has always been said that, oh, actually, a court actually granted bail. Yeah to El Zaki, mm. that why didn't mm. the federal government obey? obey? Mm. And the federal government came out to say, look, we have um, appealed this ruling by this particular court. What is happening? This thing is escalating, and Nigerians are saying that, look, for peace to reign, we must look at this case again. Well, that's, that's what I've always preached. Um, that we must not encourage a situation that breeds a fresh Boko Haram because if that happens, we will not be able to handle the situation. Our armed forces overstretched. are overstretched. They are even having to negotiate with bandits now because they can't deal a decisive blow on the bandits. So if another terrorist group emerges from the shells, of uh, the Shiite movement, we'll be in trouble. I remember attending a seminar uh, organized by the army in 2016, and um, Professor Kiari Mohamed, uh, VC of uh, Modibo Adama University, one of the best historians in our country, advised the army. He said, you are laying the same foundation, you know, that led to the emergence of Boko Haram as a terrorist group. So he advised them to stop using heavy-handed tactics against the, uh, the Shiites. But of course, many of the officers around did not like what he spoke. And that man is the best friend of the current chief of army staff. Mm. They went to the same primary school, sat beside each other for six years or so. Mm. So I was just giving them an advice as a friend that if we are not careful, these guys will develop into a full-blown terrorist group. I've not seen the Shiites carrying arms. I've not seen them carrying arms. I've not seen them carrying any gun. But they carry sticks. They carry uh, some projectiles, stones, big stones and all that, that can inflict bodily harm, that can even cause death. So gradually, they are transmogrifying into uh, a terrorist group. And we just have to be careful. And they've the, been confronting the police. For me, if you ask me, I don't know for the reason we are still keeping uh, El Zaki, but you will see from the beginning that they didn't want to release him. Because not only did, not, did they seek a stay of execution of, the, of that order, initial order, they also now filed a murder case against him in Kaduna. The case against him in Kaduna is that of murder. And once you are charged with murder, punishable with death, you don't expect to be given bail. So this is the situation now. Oh, yeah. They are referring to, the president was referring to, to that, uh, I mean, the presidency was referring to the case in Kaduna because that is a case of murder. 
-hmm. And as long as that, uh, uh, for as long as that case subsists, mm -hmm. he cannot be allowed to 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 walk home uh, uh, on bail. We but also want to use this podium to even, you know, want some Nigerians that they are stuck in trade is to bring pictures that, you know, are not, uh, you know, actually true. Yesterday, I saw a lot of these pictures on the social media. You see some militia wearing camo flag and mm. they were marching. And that you is not. Uh, uh, that is not the truth. It's a lie now. Misinformation. Even experienced journalists, you mm. see them putting they should be it on themselves. The, yes. You know, the, you know what the visuals. Visuals. should be this condemned. This television station on Monday we covered it. Yesterday we covered it, and those pictures. Look at them. This is the way they protested yesterday. They didn't have people wearing camo flags. And they are not carrying weapons. They are not moving like there military. Even, there is even somebody who what said that, 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 that the Shia is shot. The, the, the DCP no, no, Omar. No, no, and, no, no, and, no, no, and I wonder I, I've why. I've never seen them with You are living phone. outside. You're not even living in the country. I've not seen you them. You live abroad them. and you are very clear that. You, this year, you know, I saw something too that, the, the, that the, the, some journalists who should know are saying that on this uh, cabinet list mm. that there are seven former governors. But the truth is there are nine. Many of them do not know that Bona Yano used to be a governor. governor yes, they do not know. States. They do not know that uh, Silva used mm. to be a governor. Mm. So there are nine former governors on that mm. list. But you see, people, uh, people are not we, people. We, we are not ready to do any fact checking. Fact -checking we just go to and, and we create yeah, problems. And we incite that. people with these yeah. uh, pictures. Yeah, but, but, but I, I think mm. government should tread carefully on this matter, because actually there was a judge handling this issue. He was appointed to the uh, to a tribunal, an election tribunal, mm. and he suspended the matter on April 25. And that judge, you know, was assigned, uh, you know, the case. And as a government, case, you mean? Are you are you saying judiciary? The judiciary, uh -huh. too. I mean, by Let's appointing in, uh, in by appointing a judge handling the case mm -hmm. to tribunal, this is a volatile case. I think it should just have been assigned to another judge. Uh, well, now well, the man has applied. Matter. The man has applied to go to India for treatment with his wife. And the matter is, is going forward and backward. Okay, fine. Kaduna State says he's been, a, you know, he, 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 he should be tried for murder. <coughs> now, but there is a white paper, the panel set up by the Kaduna State government mm. on that in, on that violent, uh, I mean, that, that, that incident. The passage of the city of Amistad. I have Toby the, from Kwara State. He has been waiting for us. Toby, thank you for joining us again. Hello, yeah, Toby, hello. are you here? Yeah, good evening. Yes, good evening. Go ahead with your contribution. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I want to commend Baba uh, Jide on his contribution. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, I want to commend Baba Jide Kolade for his contribution, the way you analyze things, politics. So we appreciate him for that. Secondly, Thanks. I want to talk about uh, the uh, ministerial list of President Zomodo Buhari. It's very, very commendable because that is what we in Nigeria are looking up to. But we thank God that he has given us the uh, right uh, candidate that we really want. Mm -hmm. So, for uh, mostly my thanks to Baba Gide because he's a very fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. And left thank you, Toby. So what I'll say is that you mm -hmm. are raining, you, you, you say you're going to charge the man with murder. But there was a panel you set I up. Already, we already standing yes. trial for murder. Yes, there's a panel you set up. And the white paper recommended the trial of some soldiers, the soldiers who carried out that shooting. And you've not arraigned one soldier for that. Is that balanced justice? You have a volatile situation. You, do you know right now that Boko Haram, the insurgency is 10 years? It's 10 years already. Mm -hmm. And this was how it started. Right. A situation where the police confronted uh, members of uh, Boko Haram, Medugri, you know, all oh, of that. Nice and you. from that, you are, uh, from that, you know, uh, from those seemingly knockout clashes, you went into killing the uh, killing their leader, killing a uh, who was the commissioner for religious affairs mm -hmm. in Borno, mm -hmm. and then the insurgency started. You demolished his father-in-law's house. You demolished their property. Just a similar thing. Now look at what is going on. You are holding this man. You are look. You know, you've really oh, found nice. a good. You found a, a cool design. And then look at, the, look at those pictures. Are, I saw the picture of a young girl, mm. of a young girl, an underage girl, was among the people arrested. I think rights groups, civil rights groups should also take up this matter. Because you see a lot of underage, 
in the underage Nigerians being arrested. And what is the condition of those people? Government should just stop this merry-go-round. They should do something about it. The, the, this matter, there is a way they can resolve it. Let the man go and his wife go for medical treatment and then find a solution to this problem. I know a lot of people have said, oh, the Shiites are, they are this, they are that. That's their personal opinion. But now you claim the man did this and that, but you have turned him to a hero. You have turned him to a political prisoner. So how do you now justify your charges against him? You must, they, they must be clear. But the police, the police, the way it is, there's a, a, a seeming breakdown of law and other properties, you know, um, uh, in, in Abuja, you know, the security situation is tense. These people can go any route to, you know, go and protest. And we can't guarantee that their, uh, their protests will always be um, violence free. Mm -hmm. So it calls for concern. Yeah, that's why we, they say, uh, I think it was the delegate who said, Unfortunately, in all wars, those who die are those who do not deserve to die. The last time the Shiites struck uh, uh, in a heavy-handed manner in Abuja, lives were lost. People's vehicles parked in the uh, premises of the National Assembly were destroyed. People were just there to conduct their own uh, legitimate uh, businesses. Yes. They had their doors, I mean, their cars destroyed. Some set ablaze. Mm. So that's why we don't want to see this continue. We don't want to see this continue. And I've, I've supported the Shiites in the past, but their resort to violence is what I'm against. And when, if I'm against their resort to violence, it's because you can protest without necessarily destroying people's property. Mm. or even putting your own lives mm. in great danger the way they are doing. When you confront, you cannot defeat the state. When you confront the state in the manner that you are doing and killing policemen. If police you watch men, the video, kill you know, police men, they are ready, men those, were, these guys are ready to die. A policeman was killed. Were, uh, uh, look, uh, a uh, policeman uh, was killed in Kaduna by them. So is there a resort of violence now that worries me? Because I've always demanded that the, the, that the military should not use disproportionate force against uh, the Shiite. Shiite carrying clubs, and then you open uh, gunfire. Well, on however, them. it I've is when it has claimed the life of a deputy um, commissioner of police now. Yes, that's even if they didn't fire the direct shot at the guy, even if they didn't fire the direct uh, uh, shot at the policeman, it is their protest that led to his death. So they are they are becoming more and more violent quite different from what we saw in 2016. They are becoming more and more violent, and that is the worrisome part. If it goes on like this, and God forbid, if El Zazaki dies in the hands of government, or even his wife dies, these guys will become a full-blown terrorist group. And the Iranians they are will, start, they are pro, will start providing, uh, maybe Hezbollah will start providing weapons and all that for them. I don't think we can handle another terrorist group mm. outside of Boko Haram. So mm. we have to find a way. If they want to try him, let the trial be expeditious mm. so that we can get to the end of the trial. If he needs to go to jail, we'll see. If he needs to be set free, then so be it. Mm. But we shouldn't have an unnecessarily long trial mm. uh, and to keep a man and his wife in detention. Uh, and for, 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 don't for forget so his children were killed. Mm. So there, there should be balance, there should be fairness, there should be justice. Don't, you, you, you've given this man the status of a hero, of a political prisoner. And what else do you want to achieve? I want to thank you, Emeka Madunagu, for coming on this edition of Journalist Hangouts. And the Metro, it's so good to be back. Yes, welcome back from, from the US. You, yes, you now have to vacation. You now, you vacation. now whether you were in vacation or not, it could be. You, <laughs> were, you, were, you, went, you went to Dallas <laughs> and you must declare what you brought back from Dallas. You must declare what you brought back, otherwise, you will get a query. <laughs> All right, and that's our package. Uh, journalist Hangout today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can also watch Journalist Hangout on our. YouTube, that's youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is journalist hangout at tvcnews.tv. I'm Ayo Dili Uzubakun. See you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria.